Hello there and welcome to today's talk. My name is Sam Taylor, I work for International Cat Care and ISFM and I'm a feline veterinary specialist. Today we're going to talk about how you can be your cat's health detective. Now I want to start by just talking a little bit about where modern cats come from and you'll see why this is important in a moment. But what I want you to think about is that our modern pet cats are descended from African wild cats. There's a picture of one on the screen here. Now, African wildcats are independent little hunters. They live alone and they're hugely territorial. They have a very, very wide territory. Again, that can be important. Our modern cats having just a small territory. Um, and so we consider that modern cats are really tamed, but not fully domesticated. They're still very similar, as I think you can see, to this little African wildcat. And what they do is they retain a lot of behaviours from that time. So they're not quite as changed as dogs are. Um, they've had a shorter time to do it to evolve into our modern cats. Why is this important and how does it affect how they show us when they're unwell? Well, it is pretty important because if you think about being a solitary hunter, so living alone uh, with your wide territory, hunting for your prey, there's no benefit to you showing illness. No one's going to help you. Uh, you don't live with others who can protect you. And although cats are predators in the wild, they can also become prey themselves and they can easily be eaten by larger, larger carnivores. So there is this big difference from dogs who live in groups and can be assisted by other members of their groups when they're unwell. So our little African wildcat is not going to show us when they're ill at all. And that trait is carried down to our modern pet cats. And so your little cat in your house and my little cats in my house, they're not necessarily gonna show us as obviously when they're unwell. And that's why you need to be your cat's pet health detective. There are a few other reasons why illness is harder to detect in cats than it is in dogs. If you think about it, we walk our dogs every day uh, on a lead and we will probably notice if they're lame, if they're limping, um, we'll notice if they're lagging behind, we'll notice if they're breathless and tired. And these are things that we wouldn't see in our cats because we don't walk them. Also, cats are very light and agile. They're expert at jumping onto high surfaces. Uh, they move with a, a natural grace, as I'm sure all cat lovers will agree. But it means that they're less likely to limp because they're not quite as heavy. They can compensate for pain in a joint. And they are the masters of limiting their own activity. So if they feel unwell, if they feel pain or discomfort, what they'll do is they'll just sleep more and they'll just sit more quietly. So they will restrict what they do. In a cat, that might not be perceived as abnormal because cats, as we know, do sleep a lot each day. And as opposed to a dog where we're going to get them up and take them on a walk, we'll probably leave that cat to sleep and may not notice that it's sleeping a little bit more than it was and limiting how it moves a little bit more. So what are the signs of illness in cats that I want you to look out for? Start with, to notice when a behaviour is abnormal, you really need to know when a behaviour is normal. So we need to get to know our cats and we need to get to know their normal habits and their normal behaviours, because any change in that could be indicative of illness, even though it seems very subtle. So for example, if you have a cat who usually eats all of its dinner and starts leaving a small portion of it, then that could be abnormal, even though the cat's still eating. And if you have a cat that jumps on your lap every night to be petted and who suddenly isn't doing that, then that could be abnormal. Very subtle signs. So what is normal will vary from cat to cat according to their lifestyle and their behaviour. So if they're a cat that interacts a lot with the family, you will notice a change when they don't interact with the family. But if they're a cat that keeps themselves to themselves, then you may need to look for other signs that might indicate an illness. There are some obvious changes in uh, behaviour and uh, signs of illness that you're definitely going to notice and is going to prompt you to talk to your vet. And um, one of those in particular is changes in appetite. So when cats are eating less or they're refusing their meal, that's clearly cause for concern. What I'd also ask you to look for is cats that are eating more. So there are certain conditions that will make cats feel more hungry. So they'll be hassling you more for food, particularly in middle aged to older cats. This can indicate an overactive thyroid or even diabetes. So we need to notice again, talking about these changes in habits. Vomiting and diarrhea clearly is going to be something that you're going to be concerned about and perhaps consult your vet. And if your cat is drinking more, or urinating more, uh, again here this can be subtle so if you don't normally see your cat drinking so if you say well I never see my cat going to the water bowl and suddenly you see your cat going to the water bowl that may be all you notice about them drinking more and if they use a litter tray you may simply notice that the trays are a bit heavier 
uh, they have more urine in them. If your cat passes urine outside, that can be less obvious, but perhaps they're going out more often to urinate. And these are the signs that we need to look for. Other changes such as neurological signs, again, will be quite clear to you as an owner. So the cat in this image has its head held on one side, has a head tilt, and that would be cause for concern. If a cat had any fits or, or um, sudden spasms or tremors uh, or real changes in behaviour becoming very aggressive, for example, then these could indicate a neurological problem. If a cat is crying at night, particularly an older cat, that can be a sign of high blood pressure. Or if a cat just seems distressed, unsettled and more noisy, then again, that could be indicative of a problem. And I mentioned that limping is not commonly seen in cats, but with some more severe injuries, you certainly could see the cat holding a leg up. Uh, I'm sure you'll notice that and seek veterinary attention. There are a few problems here, and many of you may have thought when I was talking about diarrhea and when I was talking about excessive urination, well, my cat just goes outside. I don't see what's produced at all. And that's very, very common. You won't necessarily see them straining to pass feces or, or if there was blood in the urine, you wouldn't notice because they do it outside. And this is a challenge definitely with cats. And sometimes if I'm really worried about a patient, I will ask the client to keep them in for a night so that we can see what they're producing. What you can look for is sort of soiling or dirtiness or any dry feces on the anus or around the tail. And you might just notice, as I mentioned, that they're nipping in and out a little bit more often than you would expect or asking to go out at times when they would normally be sleeping. But this can certainly be a problem. And sometimes we need to hospitalise these animals so we can see what exactly they're producing. A few more obvious ones that you might see, and particularly if your cat uses a litter tray, is signs of discomfort when urinating, so crying out when they're passing urine. Perhaps passing just a tiny amount of urine and then coming back to the tray later and passing another small amount of urine. So, so in and out of the litter tray more often than you'd expect. Certainly urinating in the house, on soft furnishings or in inappropriate places can be a sign of either a medical or a behavioural problem and should prompt a trip to the vet. They can also change the way they eat. So even though cats are still eating, that they may be chewing on sort of one side of their mouth, they may be dropping food. Uh, and the other things you might notice are nasal and ocular discharges. And the cat in the, in the picture here, I think you can clearly see has um, a sort of bloody, nasty nasal discharge. And that would be cause for concern. Excessive sneezing and coughing, again, uh, can indicate cat flu or other problems. And these are things that are a bit less subtle and I'm sure you would notice. Equally, skin changes can indicate multiple different types of illnesses from parasitic disease to internal problems. And if your cat, like the cat in the picture here, has bald areas or scabs, uh, redness, or is itching a lot, and this is something we may not notice so much because cats groom a lot, they spend a large majority of their day grooming, and that's not unexpected. But if you think your cat's focusing more in one area, causing redness or baldness, or they just seem to be grooming themselves all the time, perhaps they're stopping what they're doing to groom, that could be an indication that they're quite itchy. Changes in the eyes, such as blood, or redness in the front of their eyes, or even just a cloudiness over their corneas. All of these things um, can be more obvious to notice. What can be subtle is blindness, and you'll be surprised perhaps to hear that. Cats are so good at compensating for sight loss, particularly if it's slow in onset, that you may not notice them bumping into things. And it can be really quite subtle, but watch for them being cautious in how they move around the room. And if you change any of the furniture around, that's when they may bump into it because they've got used to their familiar environment. Well, some of the more subtle signs are what I really want you to look out for in your cat. And weight loss is one of them. And Traumatic weight loss certainly is, is obvious, but more subtle weight loss can be really difficult to, to notice. The cat in the picture here is really very thin, and I would only really notice that by touching him. He's quite hairy, and you perhaps might think, oh, he looks a bit thin. This cat is, is very, very thin, and this, this thick hair coat is hiding that. But even a small amount of weight loss can indicate an early sign of illness, and that's why it's so important to visit your vet and have your cat weighed regularly. You might notice that your vet touches your cat and what they're doing is they're doing body condition scoring. So they're checking for the amount of muscle and fat that your cat has on their body. And that's something again that you can do at home. 
So you may not be able to weigh your cat easily, but you can feel them and, and feel their bones and feel their, their muscles. So ask your vet or your veterinary nurse or technician to guide you on how to do this. I mentioned earlier in the talk how we need to know what's normal for our cats so that we can notice what's abnormal. And I think changes in interactions with their family or their fellow pets can be a really early sign of illness. So I mentioned if your cat normally seeks your attention is now not doing so. Or perhaps they normally get on very well with the dog in the house or the cat in the house and now they're behaving aggressively with them. This would be unusual and may indicate that they're actually unwell. Hiding and sleeping in unusual locations is something I hear from a lot of my clients. So they'll tell me, I suddenly found him in the wardrobe. He's never slept in the wardrobe before in his life. Or he suddenly seems to be not coming down at breakfast time and I found him under the bed. That would really tell me this is perhaps a cat who's not well and I would want that cat to be examined by a vet. I mentioned about over grooming being a subtle finding, but what you might also see is just poor quality of their hair. So a dullness where they were usually shiny or perhaps you feel them and there's some matting which you've never noticed before. That can really be a problem in older cats where they, they get a bit arthritic and they don't groom quite as well. So even short haired cats can then develop some matting, particularly around their back legs. And that's something you might feel when you're touching them. Another subtle one is, is shedding more hair. So where the cat sleeps, you suddenly notice that there's, there are piles and piles of hair there. And that can be a sign of being generally unwell as well as a, a, a skin type condition. And just as in humans, unwell cats might not sleep quite as well. So if your cat is wandering around at night where they would normally be settled, asking to go into different rooms when they would normally be asleep. Um, and I mentioned crying at night as well, which can be uh, a more obvious sign of your cat not being quite right. The cat in the picture here is a cat that I'm treating at the moment, um, a very handsome cat, I'm sure you'll agree. And what he has is a very subtle change in the size of the pupils in his eyes. And I'm sure you can see that now you're looking at the photo, but you can imagine that in your cat at home that you're not normally looking straight in their eyes, that might be difficult to, to see and to notice. But that would certainly make me want to, uh, to advise you to see a vet if the sizes of those pupils are different as they are in this cat. If you think your cat's struggling to swallow their food, they're still eating, but they just seem to be doing a sort of stretching their neck out and doing exaggerated or swallowing, or even when they're just sat still and sat quietly, they seem to be swallowing excessively. It can be a sign that they're feeling a little bit nauseous, a little bit sick, um, and again, could be an indicator of a problem. One particular condition which is really difficult to notice clinically in cats, and I wanted to mention to you, is osteoarthritis. Uh, a common condition in older cats, you may think of it in older dogs, but not so much in older cats, where actually it's very, very common. Here is, is an x-ray of a cat's elbow, and it should be beautifully smooth at the edges of the bone. And I think you can perceive all these extra bits and pieces around the edge, and that's going to be very painful to walk on. Why do we not notice it so much in cats? I mentioned them being lighter and more agile, and also we don't take them for walks. But what you may notice is if you look for it, particularly in older cats, is that they're not jumping up and down quite as much. So they're not jumping onto a surface they used to have, or even they're just hesitating as they jump down. So they sort of pause on the edge of a step. And that means because they know it's kind of going to hurt their elbows. And so they're pausing before they jump down. Very subtle sign, but could indicate that they've got pain in their front legs. It might be slower on the stairs. You think, oh, they used to shoot up there and now they seem to be just taking their time, a bit of a plod up and down the stairs. And that could be because their joints are painful. I mentioned sleeping in different places. Certainly arthritic cats might choose to sleep in a lower location so they don't have to jump up onto a high shelf. And I talked to you about over grooming and focusing on some particular areas of the body. Arthritic cats will sometimes focus on their spine, an area on their spine or their elbows um, or even over their hips and, and just keep, seem to be making themselves sore and bald in those areas. And that's because the joints are painful. Another one I want to pick out from the others is dental disease. We often think that if a cat had really severe dental disease that they wouldn't eat. But actually, it's quite unusual for dental disease to cause a cat to be inappetent and refuse their food. It has to be really quite extreme to cause that. And many cats with nasty and painful dental disease will still be eating, even eating biscuits and crunching them. And can't tell you quite why that is, but it certainly happens. And you may see no signs whatsoever that your cat has dental disease. 
I'm showing you a picture here of a, a very painful lesion in a cat that these particular types of, of lesion are, are acutely painful. But this cat came in for a totally separate condition, did not present with any signs of, of pain in the mouth, was eating normally, normal body weight. But I'm sure felt a, a heck of a lot better when we'd removed the painful tooth. Weight loss may eventually develop because the cats are subtly eating a little bit less. They may have smelly breath, halitosis, or they may select softer foods. But as I mentioned, lots of cats with dental disease will still be crunching their biscuits. Uh, it, this is something that your vets needs to look for. So again, emphasising the importance of regular visits for checkups. So this cat had been investigated for other conditions. And once we treated this disease, as I mentioned, he felt a lot better. Other subtle ones can be uh, problems with the heart, so cardiac complaints, as well as respiratory diseases. Again, we come back to this cats limiting their own activity. So if we walk a dog, we might notice that they become breathless or panting excessively, whereas a cat will just limit their activity so that you don't see those signs. What you can do and what we advise clients with cats with heart or chest problems is to measure what's called the resting respiratory rate. So this is the number of breaths a cat takes in a minute when they're resting and when they're not purring because that will change their respiratory rate. So what I say to clients is when they're sitting quietly or dozing off to just measure how many times their chest goes up in a minute or you can do it in 30 seconds and, and double it. Not up and down but just the up breath or the down breath but just in in, in, and counting that can be a real indication of problems. And we use this to monitor how effective our treatment is as well. A resting respiratory rate should certainly be under 30 breaths per minute. And if it's becoming above that, it might mean that we need to have some veterinary attention. I mentioned panting in dogs and they use this to lose heat. Panting in cats is always abnormal and actually always quite a worrying finding. So if your cat is panting after exercise, um, they run around the garden, they come in, they're panting, or they're panting when they seem stressed or anxious, that actually should prompt a, a relatively urgent visit to the vets because it's always uh, a problem and can indicate various conditions, but it always worries me if I have a, a panting cat presented to me. Equally, if they jump after a fishing toy and then are absolutely exhausted and you can see their chest moving rapidly, that might be abnormal for them uh, if they're normally quite a fit cat. And again, maybe the only sign of having a respiratory or chest problem. Coughing, you might think, is quite obvious in cats, but actually it's commonly mistaken for retching with a furball. I'm going to show you a video of it and you'll see exactly what I mean. So what you might see is that the cat's swallowing at the end of that cough episode. So it can almost look like a, like a retch. What they tend to do, coughing cats, is they have their neck very extended, like this cat has. They often sit in a crouched position. And then at the end of the, the little coughing session, they will retch and swallow. And this is why sometimes people think it's, it's retching with, with a furball. And that's quite a common, um, a common bit of history that I'll hear in cats that I treat. And this cat has asthma. This is an asthmatic cat. And that's a classic cough presentation for an asthmatic cat. So that kind of retching with the neck out um, is often coughing rather than any indication of, of furballs or a stomach problem. So I've mentioned observing your cat's daily habits, and I think that's important. It is also important to look at their food intake and if possible, weigh or notice how many pouches you're giving your cat each day so that you can notice if that changes, increases or decreases. And I've talked to you about learning how to body condition score your cat. Weighing your cat at home is quite challenging. You can stand on the scales yourself and hold your cat and then weigh yourself again. But this is a relatively inaccurate way of measuring a cat's weight. If you have a significant issue with weight with your cat some people will purchase some scales to be able to weigh their cat on and I know of no veterinary clinic that would mind if you bring your cat in to weigh them periodically so that you can monitor the weight and do feel free if you visit your vets to remind your vet to weigh your cat and then you can keep your own records as well as the vet keeping their records and I can't stress enough how this is important for identifying the problem very early. 
What I want you to take home from this talk is to trust your own instincts and be your own cat's health detective. Often I hear from people, oh, he's just not quite right. It's, it's just not quite right, but I can't, I didn't want to bother you. It, it, it didn't seem important but you know your cat better than anyone else does. And if you are worried, speak to your vet, because sometimes when they examine your cat, they will find something that was not obvious from your um, initial observations, but you knew something was just not quite right. And it's much better to be cautious and seek early treatment. Unfortunately, because of this habit of hiding illness, as a veterinary practitioner, we'll often see cats when they're really very unwell and have lost a lot of weight, and we'd much rather see them earlier on in the course of their disease. It makes it much easier for us to treat them and keep a diary it may make it easier if you're monitoring the cat's respiratory rate you can note that down on your diary if you think well, maybe he did eat a bit less you can note that down in your diary so that you can see a pattern and you can talk to your vet about this now this is not all down to you you should have i hope a relationship with your vet where they can help you look after your cat and identify illness early but unfortunately, still many more dogs than cats are brought to the vets regularly to be checked over. I mentioned the importance of this kind of physical examination by your vet to identify problems. So do feel that you can visit your vet and have checkups done by either the vet or the veterinary nurse or technician. So they get to know your cat and you get to know what's normal for your cat. I can hear you saying it. I can hear you saying well, I know why people take dogs to the vet more than they take cats, because it's much easier to take a dog on a lead than it is to get a cat in a basket and take them to the clinic. And I completely understand that. And many cats and their, and their owners have had negative experiences trying to get their cat into a cat basket and taking them to the vets and the cats being very distressed in the clinic or even worst case scenario, the vet not being able to handle the cat or the cat reacting aggressively uh, through fear. These are things that we really want to avoid. And I'll tell you about our scheme run by um, International Society of Female Medicine shortly that should help with this. But from your point of view, it's about teaching your cat that the vets is not such a horrible place. And that starts also by teaching them the basket is not such a horrible place. So have your basket out in your day-to-day -day life with a comfortable bed in it, and it instantly is less scary than when it's pulled out of the garage when the cat's feeling unwell. So there are a few things that you can do and have a look at the International Cat Care website for more information on this. Now, other things may cause hesitation going to the vets, and that includes financial concerns, which are completely understandable. But discuss this with your vet clinic and they can also advise you on pet insurance should that be appropriate for you. I mentioned to you just now the Cat Friendly Clinic scheme, and this is a scheme run by International Cat Care and the International Society of Feline Medicine to, with the aim of improving how cats are handled in the vet clinic so that we avoid those barriers to taking your cat to the vet. So we make it a much less stressful experience. And so we ensure that vets are trained and they can handle and even cats who are fearful in the vets. I've put a link on there to that scheme and you can read a lot more about it and you can also search for a local cat friendly clinic who we hope will make the experience of going to the vets a lot more, um, if not enjoyable, certainly a lot less stressful for both of you. And then finally, I want to mention the importance of preventative health care. What's better than finding a disease and diagnosing it early? is not developing the disease at all, as I'm sure you can understand. And so preventative health care means vaccination appropriately, parasite control, but also things like appropriate nutrition and management of body weight. We unfortunately see quite a lot of chubby cats these days. So obesity is becoming a problem in this species and is associated with, with health complications, just as it is in people. We also want to prevent cats developing problem behaviors. And so, there are various ways of doing this, but they're better done when they're kittens. So you can see that preventative healthcare is much better than finding a cat with a problem later in their life. And I can direct you to the Cat Care for Life website and our scheme uh, involving talking about what cats need at different stages of their life and how your vet can work with you to prevent problems developing. I just want to go through the take home messages for the talk today. And really that is about you advocating for your cat and being your cat's own health detective. We talked about why cats will hide signs of illness related to their origin as they remember our little African wild cat. And their lifestyle is quite different to dogs. They don't go to for walks. And this means we will identify problems quite in the same way. 
I talked a lot about knowing your own cat's habits and how your own cat behaves normally. And then you can identify any deviation from that. Trust your instincts. If you think something's not right, if you think you've seen one of these subtle signs that I talked about, or even a more obvious one, then discuss it with your vet and ask for your vet to check your cat over and remember to remind them to weigh them and keep your own records of their weight and their food intake so that you can identify if there's a problem. Thank you very much.